Hey everyone, it's Kristen from Quebeca, and in this video I'll be showing you how to create cells in your acrylic pour paintings using silicone oil and isopropyl alcohol. Up until this point, I haven't used any silicone based or other additives in my acrylic pour paintings. So they have a more marbled look as opposed to lots of cells, which have become one of the trademarks of acrylic pour painting. I do use small amounts of isopropyl alcohol to get rid of bubbles in the paint, and I think that it does sometimes help create small cells in paintings, but it's nothing as pronounced as you can get with silicone based additives. I've been wanting to try a silicone based additive for a while, and this is the very first painting that I'm using it on, so let's see how it goes. I've already got my work area set up, and I'm mixing all of the paints that I'll be using with the pouring medium. I'm only using three colors for this painting, including white, so it'll be a more minimalist kind of monochromatic color palette. My pouring medium is a one-to-one -one mixture of Elmer's glue and water, and I mix about a tablespoon or so of the paint with about the same amount of pouring medium, enough that the paint becomes the consistency of buttermilk. I'm using about double the amount of white paint, which I do a lot because I tend to like a lot of white in my paintings. I keep my pouring medium in these little condiment bottles, which makes it really easy to add to the paint. If you want to see a more in-depth look at how I make my pouring medium, as well as a step-by-step -step walkthrough of all of the tools and supplies that I typically use for acrylic pour painting, check out the video at the link that should be popping up now. I mentioned earlier that I use isopropyl alcohol to get rid of bubbles in my paint mixture, and I do this using a little mister bottle that's filled with the alcohol. I give the paint mixture a few spritzes of the alcohol, then stir it around until the bubbles pop, and I repeat this process as many times as I need to get rid of most of the bubbles. For the paint colors, today I'm using Martha Stewart Wedding Cake Satin Craft Paint for the white, Martha Stewart Beach Glass for the sea foamy blue-green color, and Ceram Coat Black Paint. For the silicone oil, I'm using this treadmill belt lubricant that I found on Amazon.com. There are a lot of different silicone oils available on Amazon, and this seemed to be one of the more popular ones and wasn't too expensive. It's 100% silicone, which is exactly what we want because other additives and ingredients could affect the results of our painting. So if you can, go with 100% silicone. Some people also use oils like baby oil or even lubricants like WD-40, but you've got to get the WD-40 that's silicone based, so be sure to read the ingredients before you buy. It's completely up to you how much silicone oil you use and how many paint colors you add it to, and each variation will create different results. The typical silicone oil to paint ratio that I've seen is 4-5 to five drops of the oil per tablespoon of paint. But if you're not getting the results that you want with this ratio, you can always experiment with the amount of silicone oil that you use, as well as the consistency of the paint. There's lots of room to explore. I decided not to add any silicone oil to the white paint. I'm just going to add it to the beach glass and black paints, and I'll add four drops of oil to each. After I add the silicone oil, I'll stir the paint to combine. I'll be doing the dirty pour flip cup technique for this painting, and you can check out the video that should be popping up right about now if you want to learn more about that, but it's a fairly straightforward technique. When you see something about a dirty pour, this just means that you're pouring all of your paints into one container before pouring it onto the canvas. I'll pour all of the paints into the cup that has the beach glass paint in it, but you can pour them into any color or even pour them all into an empty cup. I like to leave some paint back in its original container in case I want to add some paint to the canvas manually later, but you don't need to do this. After all of the paints are in one container, you can take your stir stick, dip it down into the paint, and draw it across the cup to mix the paint a little bit, but for this painting I'm just going to leave the paint alone. I've got an 8x10 canvas panel here, and I have it propped up on these four little plastic shot glasses on a foil tray so the paint can run off the sides of the canvas without a problem. This setup makes cleanup a lot easier for me since I don't have a dedicated space for paint pouring. Okay, I'm going to take the canvas panel and flip it over on top of the cup with the paint. And then I'll flip everything back over and let the cup sit on the canvas for a few seconds so the paint can run down and out of the cup onto the canvas. Then I'll give the cup a tap for good measure and lift it up. I'll start tilting the panel around to get the paint moving, and I can already see a few cells, but nothing too big at this point. I'm also not seeing much white paint at all, so I'll come back in with the paint that I left in the cup earlier and pour some of it onto the canvas. I'll also add white paint to the top corner of the canvas there since there's not any paint in that area at this point. 
I'll continue tilting the canvas panel around to move the paint, and I'm starting to notice some tiny little cells on the surface of the paint, but the effect is still pretty subtle. Several minutes later, I'm liking how things are looking, but I'm still not seeing much in the way of cells. So I'm gonna come in with the isopropyl alcohol spray mister and give the painting several spritzes. And after that, I can see the cells start opening up almost immediately. They're still pretty small, but I'm really liking this look. It gives the painting a great textured look. I'll pick the painting back up and tilt it around a bit more to open those cells up even further. I like that they start forming more irregular shapes as they move around with the paint. I think that this isn't too bad for a first attempt at making cells. I'm wondering what would have happened if I would have added silicone to the white paint as well, or if I would have let the paint sit without spritzing it with alcohol, or what would have happened if I would have added more silicone oil to the paints. I definitely want to explore more with the silicone oil and cells, and let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more cell experiments too. Now I'm going to let the painting dry completely, and dry time is usually about 24 to 36 hours with these canvas panels and the amount of paint that I typically use for the paintings. I was wondering whether the painting would feel oily when it dried because of the silicone oil, and it really didn't. There was a very, very slightly slick feeling on my fingers after I ran them over the surface, but definitely not oily. If I had used more silicone oil, it may have been a different story. You can find a full list of supplies used in this video in the description area below or in the area below the video if you're watching on kbecca.com. I hope that you found this video to be helpful, and if you'd like to see more acrylic pore painting videos, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll tune in again soon.